Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Coast Guard functions as the Maritime Law Enforcement and Search and Rescue Branch of the United States Armed Forces, and its pride and joy is the USCG Healy. This 420-foot-long, 16,000-ton icebreaker is considered the most advanced ship of its kind in the entire Coast Guard fleet. Its icebreaking abilities allow it to reach areas in the Arctic Circle that most boats would never manage. In fact, in 2015, it became the first unaccompanied U.S. surface vessel to reach the North Pole officially. But while the Healy has participated in several major search and rescue operations, its main purpose is research. It boasts more than 4,000 square feet of laboratory space and loads of scientific equipment designed to help scientists better understand the changing world and the Arctic climate. Generally, about 51 scientists will be aboard at any one time, roughly equal to the 54 enlisted crew members who help keep the ship operational. During the design phase, Avondale Industries drew upon Finnish technology to develop a new form of propulsion line engineering for the Healy. These engines combine diesel and electric power, which focus less on speed and more on ice breaking ability and energy maximization. Here you can see a replacement propulsion engine being moved from a storage facility for delivery to the vessel. The replacement took place in a dry dock in Vallejo, California. Both of Healy's two holes needed to be removed in order to facilitate the installation. Due to the size of the engine and the complexity of the ship, it took more than a month to complete the process. Teams of welders worked for weeks to separate the dual sections of the hull, which are integral to allowing the vessel to travel through ice flows. The process also required special heavy lifting cranes which could move the sections easily despite weighing dozens of tons each. After the damaged engine was removed, the replacement was installed and the whole sections were replaced. The final result is a nearly seamless repair that is just as strong as before the replacement. The Healy is uniquely designed to move through large sections of Arctic ice with little to no difficulty. Mm -hmm. 
moving at a continuous speed of 3.5 miles per hour. The Healy can continuously break through ice flows that are up to 4.5 feet thick. When backing up or ramming, the vessel can break through ice that's up to 10 feet thick, ensuring that even the most remote regions of the Arctic remain fully accessible. The ship is also designed to operate in temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is important to the safety of the 130 or so souls on board. The vessel is also fully equipped to operate as a mobile command center, boasting two HH-65A Dolphin helicopters and a full-sized landing pad. The vessel also has two articulated cranes capable of holding 14 and 4.5 tons, respectively. The Healy's rescue capabilities have been put to the test several times since her commissioning. In 2014, a man sailing his boat from Vancouver to eastern Canada by way of the Northwest Passage became stranded in the ice. At the time, the man was some 40 miles north of Barrow, Alaska. Since the climate up in the region is extremely dangerous over long periods, the Healy was quickly dispatched to retrieve the man and tow his vessel safely back to shore. Two years earlier, the Healy escorted a tanker carrying a critical load of fuel for Nome, Alaska through particularly dangerous conditions. The tanker, known as the Rinda, ended up getting an escort across more than 300 nautical miles, after which it successfully completed its delivery. Would the product warm it up to that point? These operations, as well as the many scientific endeavors it supports, have earned the Healy and her crew numerous commendations from the U.S. Coast Guard. However, the ship's career is only just getting started. It's important to understand just how dangerous it can be to operate a large vessel in the open sea, even in situations where ice and freezing cold temperatures are not a threat. Just ask the crew of the USS Fitzgerald, an Arleigh Burke-class Navy destroyer that collided with a container ship in June of 2017. The incident resulted in significant damage and Fitzgerald was quickly moved to a dry dock. Here, you can see the ship being maneuvered into place by several tugboats. Once in place atop the supports, the water is pumped out of the dry dock canal giving the repair team a much better view of the Fitzgerald's hull. Not all visits to the dry dock are emergencies, however.
In the case of the USS Carl Vinson, a Nimitz-class nuclear aircraft carrier, the ship spent nearly a year at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility as part of planned deference. You can see here how seawater is pumped into the canal holding the vessel. As the water continues to fill the areas under and around the ship, it slowly lifts it off the supports until it is free floating once again. Of course, a ship of this size can't maneuver well in such tight quarters, so a small fleet of tugboats is used to maneuver the 1,000 foot long ship into deeper water. Powering a vessel nearly the size of three football fields is a monumental task. Fortunately, much of the work is automated nowadays. However, close observation and testing require a team of human eyes. This mostly takes place in the vessel's main machinery room. Down, two -thirds, a large control center filled with knobs, dials, and other indicators that provide crucial information about various parts of the engine and other systems. From here, the team can monitor almost every important process of the ship. As one might expect, the machinery room and other parts of the engineering section of the ships are inspected frequently. If something were to go wrong with one of the ship's systems, this would be the first line of defense. Fire drills are among the most important exercises that sailors aboard the ship can take part in. Even small fires can completely devastate a vessel at sea, so it's crucial that all sailors be ready and prepared to deal with a potential issue quickly and completely. Here you can see sailors in the main engine room of the USS William P. Lawrence participating in a fire drill. The tight quarters and low ceilings necessitate these crew members to be in full firefighting gear and use oxygen at all times. In the event of a real fire, smoke and flames would move quickly through these cramped spaces, so every second counts. The crew members assigned to the engine room of the U.S. Navy's aircraft carriers have an even bigger responsibility. It's part of their job to coordinate with the flight deck crews in order to allow for the safe landing of the ship's most valuable asset, aircraft. Carriers typically perform daily flight operations and drills to ensure that their pilots and flight crews are always ready for anything. However, from the engine room to the tower to the flight deck itself, these operations require the work of hundreds of people working together. For decades, one of the most well-known aircraft carriers has been the USS Enterprise. The most recent ship to bear the name was retired back in 2017 after service since 1958.
Throughout that time, it was one of the most powerful carriers in the world. Fortunately, the Navy won't have to wait much longer to get an Enterprise back in the fleet. A new Gerald R. Ford class vessel is planned for launch sometime in 2025. Be it in the frozen Arctic or the Pacific Ocean, the United States military is always on patrol. Its fleet features some of the most capable and technologically advanced ships in the world. Whether they're keeping the peace or performing scientific research, they are truly incredible feats of engineering. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.